Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm going to buy two altcoins and these altcoins are accumulation bags. If you are new to this channel, make sure you have subscribed, hit the bell button and leave a like. This week, a bit of upheaval, someone's moving out of my house, so it's a, get, it's a bit crazy, so there's no face today. Maybe tomorrow, who knows, but maybe some videos might be missed, maybe some more random ones on a night, I don't know. We'll see how the week goes, it's essentially mental. Right, I want to talk about it. Two old coins that I'm looking to add a little bit to right now. Even though I've done videos on how I'm playing the market, they're still undervalued in my opinion. This is not me going full balls deep, by the way, just a disclaimer. These are investment holds and I percentage the... Uh, well, I've done a percentage maths ratio on percentage risk of BTC that I'm holding and moving it into these assets. Now, this does not mean ape into them. This just means... I'm adding a bit here because it's a bit more confident in terms of the uprising trend of these assets. Now, we may well find that the BTC dominance does still drop and it may well lead to some pain essentially in the BTC pair if that BTC dominance does rise. But overall, I still think it's a decent place to buy these assets in. I'm going to explain which ones I have bought. So without further ado, I mentioned it yesterday in one of my videos that I was looking to buy. You've probably worked out anyways. One of them is Polkadot and the other one is Reserve Rights because they're both very much undervalued in my honest opinion. The reason why I'll, I'll make the case for this first, obviously, yes, I'm a big holder. Yes, I'm a staker and that staking element to it is probably the biggest element around it. It's about 13.8% reward right now, which is pretty good. That will change over time. However, accumulation is key. I'm thinking long, long term. I've already mentioned it before in the past. I rate Polkadot quite a lot. I rate it a lot. I think it has all the hallmarks to become a top, basically a top four, top five asset overall in its right due to what it offers versus everything else, in my opinion, right? Not financial advice, of course. It's a multi-chain, it's a bit different. It already has some huge people from the world of Ethereum, Dr. Gavin Wood, for example, who basically created the Ethereum language in basically a toilet poo um, over a couple of hours, if you could put it that way. And what is built with this is unbelievably robust, interoperable, it's quick, it's scalable, it's ridiculous, right? And I rate it a lot. Again, this is not a factual kind of video to kind of go and tell you everything, the ins and outs of it, because I have done other videos on it. But realistically, when you're thinking long term, and I'm going to go to the chat in a bit, when you're thinking elements of passive income, and let's just say, for example, right, let's just talk simple terms here. If you have enough polka dot for the long term to sit on it, and if you were early to the party when I first talked about this, when it was like three, four dollars, I'm saying, right, buy this now. It's ridiculously underpriced. Just buy it. And everyone was telling me, no, it's overvalued. And everyone was like, not looking at the obvious here. The, the tokenomics of this is going to be very, very interesting to see where it goes when everything is live. And that is the key word here. When everything is live. People are very, very quick to point out the fact that I've been talking about this for a while but they're also very quick to say, well, you predicted this and that, but nothing's changed since those videos. The only thing that's changed is Bitcoin has went from 65K down to 30K, right? In terms of Polkadot, the projects aren't live yet. The parachains aren't live yet. So this is a big, massive ding a -ling in your head going, mate, nothing's happened yet. That's great. I can buy more. And that should be the call here. That should be you looking at this thinking, why would I buy an asset when it's fully, fully grown and done its thing? There's always an element of risk to this, but this is how you make money in the market. Risk, right? Buy things before it is fully, fully established. Now, we may be looking back and thinking, well, two years time, going back and forth, going, I wish I bought at this price. Why? Because there was no parachains, there was no relay chains, there was very, very limited projects on here. And the staking rewards were pretty good. You may well regret it if you do not think about the longer term picture, which is important. Now, I mentioned it in a video three, four weeks ago. I want to hit a golden ratio number of two to three passive dot easily by a certain price point. I'm getting close to that point now. 
Why? Because if I see this as a hundred, two hundred dollar asset, and I'm making a passive income off this, off two, two dot per day, for example, every day without fail, in terms of rewards, even though that percentage may change a little bit, it's still very, very good passive income that will go into my available balance, which then could be used for other things, to live on, for example, to do other things. That is a point of passive investing and also being a, a stakeholder in a very, very big project in cryptocurrency. A lot of people have made massive chunks of wealth by being an early Ethereum investor, you know, early Bitcoin investor, etc., etc. right? Going back and back and on all kinds of projects, right? This has all the hallmarks to become a big giant in the space. And it is currently at 17.9 billion market cap with no real projects live properly yet. When you look at the fact of what Ethereum is right now in terms of price point, and not so much the price point, but the worth and the wealth of it, 304 billion. There's a big, 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 big gap there to fill. And it's going to gradually increase over time, in my opinion. And I say the same for Cardano as well when they get their stuff sorted. There's big projects that are sitting there that could eat up a part of that market cap of Bitcoin, of Ethereum, etc. And that is why I'm backing it. So that is number one, right? I'll look at the chart in a bit to show you why I'm buying it too. The next one is reserve rights. Again, this is oh, this is ridiculously undervalued in my opinion. This is a totally different kind of ballpark as well. 415 million market cap, totally different. 114 in the ranks overall in terms of value. And this is a bit different. You need to do your research and understand the circulating supply. The one thing that people always go, well, the supplies are different about 60% of that will not even go onto the live market. You need to understand how it will physically work and then you'll get to gist of why that token economic is like that. Now, mainnet is coming out at the end of the year. They're doing a lot of PR, I mentioned it. So expect this to kind of get in your earbuds a little bit more over time through podcasts, through interviews, etc., etc. Now, if you've not done any sort of research on this, I said it yesterday, do it, check it out because of what it is aiming to achieve. Now for me, fundamental wise, I think it's solid. I like it a lot. The team have huge backers. It's already available in three countries right now, as you can see here, and it's only available on the Android store. It's very, very limited, but it's already ranked high. It's already got so many, you know, it's already had 100,000 transactions, I think, on one of the protocols as well. And it hasn't even got a mainnet yet. But when you start looking at the investors and the team and all kinds of good stuff, I've mentioned it before, it's ridiculous how much is in this with the influence and stuff like that. This is a absolute, in my opinion, a sleeping giant that could well become a top 20 coin over time. And this is where it gets interesting. These are growing every single time I look at this and go back through it. It gets bigger and bigger. And the amount of people back in this is ridiculous. And it hasn't even started yet. And this is where it gets very, very interesting. They have been growing their ecosystem of developers. They are growing every day in terms of these countries being used and utilized in a proper, proper way. It's got a heart. It's kind of got a heartfelt story to it where it is used in those countries as well. It's important. So for me, I'm pretty, you know, pretty excited about it long term. I don't have my magical number yet. I'm getting towards it. I'm waiting to see what happens over the next coming weeks and months. But overall, I'm in a very, very good position to be quite happy with it. But as I say, there's a lot of things changing around everything that they're aiming to do when mainnet comes. So there's going to be a lot of big things happening over time. And this is why I'm buying it now. I'm thinking, well, I can add to the bag here. I added a couple of weeks back. I've added a bit more now. And I think it makes absolute sense. So let's talk about the charties. Now, Polkadot. The dream scenario would be to have orders in down here, right? These two levels here, around 26,000 Satoshis and around 20,000 Satoshis. They're the dream levels. But the reason why I bought in now, and you may think it's a little bit FOMO-y, but it realistically isn't, right? When you think about where we have been in the past here, all the way up there, and I'm buying here, it's important. But the reason why I bought is because we've had a clear break of the EMA. That is why I thought, right, boom. Even if we melt from this point, I'm not bothered. I really am not. Because 
overall, dollar cost average, $18, dot, not bad, right? Considering where it's been, $60, that's still good as a dollar cost average. It's all about safety and numbers and having a little bit of support behind you to do it. There's no point buying a dip that keeps on dipping, but you always have to have something as a degree of support. Now, yes, trend formation, not ideal, not perfect, but at the same time, if it goes down here, I don't really care. I'll buy even more. And that's the point of it. That is the point of the exercise. We may have bottomed out here. There's no point waiting for the levels lower down until something fundamentally changes and you've got a break of structure. We've actually had a break of structure, which is why I'm more inclined to go in. So we've had this level here, we've blasted through it, boom. The EMA is now below a support. That's important. That is an important thing. So it'll take a bit more for it to just melt down. And personally, it may not melt down. We may not find that the dominance goes as high as I, I expected, which is why you've got to do it on each coin basis. Don't just go off the index of the dominance chart. It's a timing indicator. If your old coin that you're wanting to buy has hit a key level and it has actually hit a key level and turned around and done a big impulse, you may want to think, well, I might want to buy. But realistically, you're still getting a huge discount. If you think about buying around this area here where we have just pretty much pulled the trigger, it's still undervalued. It's still lower than it has been. And as I mentioned in my tweet, we are down 55% from the top. That's a huge chunk. And guess what? If we go and re-correct up to that point, it's still a huge risk reward. A huge amount of money can be made here. And that is where it's important. You know, yeah, it may go lower. It may well go lower. Who knows? The market is uncertain. We never go with certainties in the market because it's all probability. So that's important to know. So if you were thinking about buying Polkadot and you've got BTC spare, it's not a bad place to be, realistically, when you think about it. Yes, it's a bit firmer. Yes, there's been a good growth the last few days. But stuff has changed fundamental-wise in terms of chart analysis. It's made it a bit more clear that this is actually a lot stronger than we think. And it also has had a huge correction as well. Next one, I mentioned it before, reserve rights. Now, this is getting a bit closer to my magical numbers. However, this again is another one that has had a bit of a change. However, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, this is still not a bad place to be. I bought a 69 starts a few weeks back um, around here, mid-June time. Around this point, I bought around here, right? Quite happy to do that. It went lower, didn't buy any. I was waiting to see what happens, but either way, it's now above the EMA, it's looking quite good. But when you look left here, we've been here quite a lot. So I'm more than happy to pull the trigger here. So I did. Um, so overall, that's pretty good. But when you look at all-time high in terms of like Satoshi levels on this, by the way, this has got a much deeper correction already happened. So we're 70% down on the all-time high levels. However, when we start looking at going back up to those all-time high levels in 2020, you know, it could well be a three and a half X on your BTC buying from this point. So I think risk reward on reserve rights is actually relatively good, right? And I think, yes, we could go a little bit lower maybe, who knows? But it depends on that market inside of it. I don't want to just kind of chance it and hope that it doesn't happen. But at the same time, I'm like, I've got a load here. I'll just go, just keep going up, right? However, I do kind of, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens over time. If BTC dominance does rise up a little bit more, this will probably get more punished versus DOT, in my opinion, because DOT is a much higher market cap project, got a lot more eyeballs versus this. If there's a delay in terms of interviews and market NPR, this may be a great time for it, you know, it to drop, hopefully, to get even more. And then when the said PR happens, when main happens, this will have its time in the sun, and that will yield some very, very nice profits and maybe... Going from 114 market gap up to like the top 20 could well be a reality in the next coming years, which is what I'm overall predicting. Again, not financial advice, just talking realism here. This has got a lot of backers. It's got a lot of use case fundamentals, which is really, really strong. It's also got a big supply as well, which is also important for that. So yeah, that is my point. However, when we start looking at the price on USD, it's only three cents. And again, I've bought at this level here, roughly, if you are translated to USD, it's been roughly $12. And it is currently at three, uh, $12, sorry, <laughs> 12 cents. And it's currently at three cents, roughly. So still a huge correction, still a great place to buy, in my opinion, especially if you're looking at the dollar cost average. That's why I've done it. And again, I may well be coming back to these in a couple of weeks time, maybe bought more, who knows? We'll see. Anyways. 
If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Make sure you have subscribed. And yeah, pretty bullish about both of these longer term. Thank you.